and I said, oh, you know, I did that long ago when the Beatles went to visit my Rishi in the late 60s and it was the early 70s and I was a medical student and we all kind of thought it was the kind of cool and what we used to say then, and it, I don't think anybody uses the word anymore, we thought it was groovy. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody knows what groovy is anymore, but it was, it was really just one of those things you had to do. And then I kind of let it drop because, you know, that's what you do with groovy things. You do them and then you go and do something else. But he says, you know, you should get back to it. And I did. I got back to it. And I personally have found transformation in a lot of ways through this technique. And so in both cases, I brought this, quotes, discovery, because I didn't discover light and I didn't discover transcendence. But it was like, you know how you discover a new restaurant? And of course, the restaurant's been around, they didn't discover it, but it's wow. Now, I know it's here, and I can tell all my friends about it. So I discover these two things for myself, and I'm happy to share it out. It's hard to know when something becomes a part of your daily life. What is it doing for you? Because what does breakfast do for me? I don't know. I eat it every day. I never go without it. So I really wouldn't know how it would be, but I don't think I would feel as good. And I don't think I would feel as good without my meditation. I know I wouldn't because sometimes uh, by happenstance I have to skip and I always end up regretting it. I feel the difference. I feel when I've got that transcendent calm feeling, it's with me all day long and I feel it and it emanates from you when you're calm and, and other people respond to it. They pick it up and somehow they're nicer to you. In Transcendence, I've got the story of this horrible felon. Well, he was a horrible felon, a murderer, and heavens knows what, what all else. And he was just ready to stick a knife in your ribs if you looked at him the wrong way. And in the prison system in California, he learned Transcendental Meditation. And bit by bit, it turned him around gave him those few extra seconds, you heard one of the people say, gives you those few extra seconds. If somebody looks at you the wrong way, you can say, that's a very funny uh, story of a little kid, of a colleague of mine, a young patient, uh, and he says, my, my friend said to him, what's the difference since you've been meditating? He says, you know, before I was meditating, if somebody bumped me in the hall, I would hit him. Now somebody bumps me in the hall, I say to myself, should I hit him or not? Just those few seconds to ask yourself that question. Well, this felon, going back to him, transformed his life, got out by a miracle, got out of jail, because he was supposed to be there for the rest of his days. But because he turned himself around so much, he got out of jail. And what he said is, you know, I thought the world was a mean and nasty place. But you know, I was the mean and nasty person. And when I stopped being that way, the world stopped being that way. The world, we often experience the world, as it says in the Talmud, we see the world not as it is, but as we are. And that is how meditation changes your world. It changes because you, and years. when you get changed, people respond. When I did it first, I was a very young man, I didn't take it seriously, it was just a fun thing to do. When I did it 30 years later or more, more than 30 years later, I didn't even want to count, I was not such a young man. And I realized at that time, and my patient kept reminding me incidentally in case I forgot, that Anything that you want to have an enduring effect on you, you have to do regularly, which makes sense if you think of it. You know, we used to have these diets that used to last two weeks. The pineapple and chicken diet, do it for two weeks and lose 10 pounds and so on. And so what happens? You gain it all back again. And then we realize that it's no good going on a diet for a week or two. You have to change your style of eating in a sort of sustained way. Or if these people who were weekend golfers, well, that did nothing for them. You have to exercise in a regular way. And so, with the benefit of maturity, I understood, and my patient didn't uh, stop reminding me, that I needed to do it regularly. As he said, 
how would it be if I took my medicines once a week? You know, when a bipolar patient says that to you, say, don't you even think about it. Every single day, that's how you need to do your meditation. <laughs> so it was true. And the other thing about my experience with meditation is I wasn't one of these people who has an immediate effect. Some people do. My dear friend David Lynch says, when I first meditated, it was as though I was in an elevator, which you'd call here a lift, and somebody cut the cable, and I fell into bliss. Well, nothing like that happened to me. But what did happen to me is that when I was meditating for four, six, eight weeks, all of a sudden, very curious things happened because people would start saying things that previously would have offended me or I would have reacted to, and now I didn't feel that need. But well, that's kind of interesting, what this person's saying, and let me think about that. And so I became less reactive, less volatile, calmer. So I was older, I was more mature, I understood that you have to do something repeatedly in order to get benefit. I hadn't understood that years before. I really recognized that this was a very potent intervention, whereas when I was young I thought it was just for fun, which it really isn't. It's much more than that. And so I got the benefit and so I still do it and so I have this great joy in sharing that experience with 